Hello everyone, welcome to an analysis of dance where we discuss the movements and debuts of the Billboard Hot Dance Charts in immaculate detail with in-depth reviews of each debut each week. It feels like this is one of those weeks that really does mean the most when it comes to this year. The sort of week that while not busy shows some genuine promise going into 2024 and some great change that is more than welcome for me. I mean, putting aside the obvious, the charts saw some welcome shakeups. there are a surprisingly decent number of surprises in the debuts and there are some movements that really look promising and some songs that are genuinely holding on remaining pretty stable into 2024 that's great to see and you know what that starts with our new number one after 55 fucking weeks strangers by kenya grace now this is a huge accomplishment the first time that a solo female producer has managed to hit number one on this chart by themselves and with the song being a self-produced self-written drum and bass song from a woman that's a huge accomplishment and really does show some promise moving forward especially with the song being as great as is this is a great sign of what's to come and what's even more promising is that they're doing it right the radio is on board the streaming and sales are absolutely huge for this this is gonna stick around and hell it's gotten so big that Kenya Grace got another charting song this week but we'll get to that later on and yeah this finally did the unthinkable and knocked down I'm Good Blue by David Guetta and BB Rexa to number two it feels so weird saying that but given that the song's only really holding on really damn strong on radio and that's it it should not be surprising that this is gonna get knocked down the real question though is how much it's going to get knocked down even further in the next couple of weeks, especially with our big challenger below it being Ecstasy by Suicidal Idol at number three, which yes, is getting a huge streaming boost and honestly the controversies kind of helped this song get more popular as much as I hate to admit it. But hey, given this hit number one on the bubbling under, it's probably going to hit the Hot 100 next week. We'll have to see if this actually overtakes I'm Good Blue as well. That'll be interesting. Skipping past Baby Don't Hurt Me by David Guetta, Anne Marie and Coyle Ray at number four, which is just losing all all of that momentum it got from radio last week and honestly is on its way out naturally. We have another contender with GMFU by Odatari and Barely Human at number five. Again, the only reason that these songs from Odatari are actually sticking around is because of streaming. It's not like anyone's actually buying them or there's radio support. Hell, I expect Rush by Troy Savan to rebound up from number six, mainly thanks to the album's impact that will hit the charts next week, as the streaming and sales are remaining remarkably solid, even if there's no radio to speak of with this one. But then that leaves the last four and God, Damn it, this was so close to being a great list of songs. I mean, I Love You Ho by Odatari and Nine Lives managed to rebound up to number seven, and really I only blame that on choice of I'm falling out of the top ten. But I'll certainly take it over the unwelcome return of Lovely Bastards by Yatashi Gang and Zwei Handa at number eight. Okay, seriously, this meme was at least funny for the first few seconds, but now it's just getting old, stale, and completely fucking overplayed at this point. This song has nothing going for it besides the first few seconds, and I I can't believe that the general public is laying this beyond basic trash get yeah, any sort of rebounds to the top 10. Thankfully though, we're back to the quality. It's back on 74 by Jungle, rebounded up to number 9. And really, given that rate is the only thing that's preventing this from getting any higher, I'm honestly expecting this to get some more momentum going forward and that is great news to see. And finally, rebounding into the top 10 and honestly surprising me a lot, Ella Variga by Alex Favela, Grupo Marquera de Strada and Joaquin Medina at number 10. And look, it's got huge streaming and radio might actually be on board with this, which is really surprising to me. But really, I'm just more than happy that it's actually able to come back to the top 10. We could use some change of pace with songs like this. But on the opposite end, our falls and fall-offs this week, where we didn't really see any huge fall-offs outside of maybe the Provenza remix by Carol Jean Tiesto, which will just barely make the year-end list, as well as Tension by Kylie Minogue, which flopped really considerably and will probably miss it. It's unfortunate too, given it's only grown on me with recent weeks. Our falls though, actually actually kind of interesting, being mostly debuts from last week with one clear exception, being Jungle by Alok, The Chainsmokers and May Stevens at 43. Wow, talk about a flop year. It's really bad when even Alok has a flop single because of The Chainsmokers. Congratulations there. Outside of that, Got Me Started by Troy Savan fell to 13. This is going to rebound next week. And Feed's album bomb saw some considerable losses with Losers to Techno down to 28 and Ferxel 151 with Icon down to 31. Man, these really 
did not perform well at all. That's a shame. And on the topic of shocks, we actually had two comes back this week, although I don't expect either to really have any chance of sticking around. I mean, I am pleasantly surprised that Ray of Solar by a Swedish House Mafia managed to rebound yet again to 42. Seriously, this song's actually holding pretty damn steady now. That's a great sign. More interestingly is Tempo by Marshmallow and Young Miko rebounding to 49, which kind of makes sense given that there's been an album impact for Marshmallow where he's going for more of the Latin pivot for an entire album. Yay to those who give a shit, which I don't. But on the topic of not giving a shit, the only game this week was Hypnotic Data by Odatari in 19. I'm just getting fucking bored of all these Odatari songs being hits. The guy's got barely any talent to begin with. Can we stop giving him hits, please? But thankfully onto something better with our four debuts this week, starting off with number 47, In This World by Grizz. surprises me whenever I see Grizz on this chart, let alone songs from EP releases that really should not have any sort of momentum to them. I mean, seriously, he's one of those artists that occupies a weird space in mainstream EDM where, yes, he did get a top 10 hit with Grizztronics in 2020, but he's the sort of artist that occupies the dubstep and neurofunk scene that's just outside of the mainstream and not the type of thing that gets airplay or any sort of mainstream push as of recently. So it pleasantly surprised me that he was actually able to gain some momentum from this random EP track. I honestly had some expectations with this given that I've liked Grizz releases in recent weeks so I was curious here and honestly this is really damn solid although it's nothing all that groundbreaking for him the song maintains a consistent energy with the vocal samples bouncing off of Grizz's really distinct neurofunk production that actually creates a really upbeat and energetic vibe that I really did enjoy quite a bit although surprisingly the drops actually maintain a really chill vibe with the neurofunk touches alongside some really pretty synth production and it really does work well for me in terms of creating such a sunny sound to it I quite enjoy this vibe, especially around summer here in Australia. More than anything, it reminds me a lot of Flume's older material, especially with the way the song sounds. It could honestly fit on the self-titled album quite a bit, and that's a huge compliment for me. I mean, there's not a whole lot in terms of surprises here. The song kind of just expands on the already existing appeal of Grizz's neurofunk sound. It doesn't really do a whole lot that goes anywhere interesting across three minutes, but still, for doing the basics right, Grizz actually nails the vibe quite well here, and I actually found this really damn enjoyable. So yeah, good song. I'm glad I was able to cross over. I might actually check out the EP after doing this. You never know. It could be really interesting. Number 44, Freak 54, Freak Outs by Pitbull and Null Rogers. Just let it all hang out. If you want to get turned back. Topic of surprise debuts. Okay, did anyone actually remember that Pitbull released an album last week? I mean, the buzz for it just seemed to come and go, which is kind of worrying considering Cafe Cornelice was a pretty considerable hit off of it. What's even more depressing is that this is the only charting song from the album's impacts, where it's built across the original song La Freak by Chic, and okay, this just does not work for me. I mean, I get the appeal of this. Noel Rogers' guitar sounds as great as always, and the way they flip the sample across the verses was actually pretty damn cool but I'm sorry there's just no way about it this just does not work for Pitbull at all his best songs have energy a tight groove and faster tempo this just feels very trudging and not particularly interesting either I mean seriously you could even add that onto the production here which yes doesn't really feel all that bad and again like I said the flip is cool but the song just feels like it's missing some elements to really make it stand out I mean it sounds very dry and lacking in atmosphere the crowd vocals are mixed well Way too quietly and don't hit at all and again the hook feels really underdeveloped which for a song that's based around a really iconic sample from the original disco classic that's kind of a problem here I mean I can't call this bad I get why people like it and I get why it would go viral off the sample but I'm sorry this is a miss for me and compared to I feel good at Cafe Con Leche this just does not work for me in the same way so yeah kind of mediocre I'd pass number 35 only in my mind by Kenya Gray Inside my pillowcase, I feel you and your fingers trace, but I know you have been here and there. One of the most 
pleasing things this entire year has been seeing the huge meteoric rise of Kenya Grace and one of the biggest underdog stories of the entire year. I mean, Strangers is not just number one on this chart, but on several charts across the world. It's a sort of massive surge in popularity where it took only six weeks to get number one here and even less around the other countries that I just mentioned. And wow, it's been a great underdog story for that this entire year and redeemed a lot of things at the end this year. Of course, given how big Strangers is, it doesn't really surprise me that Kenya Grace dropped a new single and people actually checked it out. I mean, with this sort of popular song that's really well beloved by the majority of the critic set, it wouldn't be surprising that they would go and see what else she has going for her. Now, this song, okay, wow, this is great too. Although it hits in much different ways than that of Strangers and really does show that she's got a lot of creativity in the scene. For one, it doesn't lean on the drum based production at all. Instead of going for a sort of hardcore sound that you expect out of Miss You or any sort of song that Hannah Lang's doing at the moment, alongside some deep house and trance touches that make this mix sound absolutely huge and gorgeous as all hell. Seriously, this nocturnal vibe is something that Kenya Grace absolutely nails every single time, especially with her lighter hushed vocal tone that yes, does feel a bit harder to fit into a song like this, but she does ramp up her intensity and it honestly works really damn well here. She's got a great voice and I'd like to see her on some features in the future. The lyrics are also once again excellent, where she has visions of this intimate moment she had with a partner whilst in bed, specifically with the refrain of I have a video that I watch in my bed, where you can really tell how much this really did mean to her. And again, the heart break is palpable. Again, like Strangers, it really does sell the moment quite well, especially with such dark and nocturnal atmosphere like this. It's perfect for her style. So yeah, another great song from Kenya Grace. Honestly, I don't expect this to have as much staying power as Strangers, but really what else can at this point? But still, I'd like to see this stick around. This is a legitimately great song and shows an artist who really has the potential to be an absolute star in the making. And yeah, this is great. Check it out. And finally, number 25, Saving Up by by Dom Dollar? just blows my mind that Dom Dollar's at such a stage of popularity where even a solo track from him can debut on the top 25 of this chart. Especially with this that comes after two massive hits with Rhyme Dust and Eat Your Man. Both songs that really did surprise me in terms of their staying power to begin with. I mean I had hopes for this given that I've heard a lot of praise towards this from the EDM circles that I'm in and yeah that praise is well deserved because this is fucking great. Holy shit. What surprises me is that this actually went for a much more different style to that of Dom Dollar's other hits this year, where it's much more low key with the tech house approach and some more melodic touches on the bass frequencies that really do make it stand out quite a bit. I mean, there's the elements of bounce in the bass line alongside a cool retro 90s aesthetic with those vocal samples that sound absolutely great next to everything else here. It's the sort of song where not only can you easily groove to this, it's also the sort of song that's really relaxing and very easy to vibe along with. There's a broad appeal with this one that makes me not at all surprised that it debuted as high as it did. So yeah, and Another win for Dom Dollar. Hopefully this one manages to stick into 2024. It's really damn good. Please check this one out if you haven't yet. And that was our week. And there was a two-way race for the best. Let me just say that right now. Honestly though, I'm gonna give it to Only In My Mind by Kenya Grace. Although Saving Up was really damn close. They could honestly switch around at any given time. They're both fantastic songs. Worst is easy though. That's going to Freak 54 Freak Out by Pitbull and Nile Rogers. I'm sorry, it just does not work for me. And it's really disappointing given that I used to really like people's hits back in the day. Next week might actually contain a fair few choice of Vaughn songs as the album Impact really does hit, but honestly I have no idea what else to expect. There could be some really interesting surprises, you never know. But yeah, that's all for this episode of the Analysis of Dance. See you next time.